we can get stuck in so many areas in life. Maybe we're stuck in a bad relationship or a bad job or a bad apartment, roommates, whatever it may be. We're stuck in something. So how do we change that? <coughs> yeah, I just wanna be real. Got a little bit of bronchitis right now. Have you heard about fear versus abundance mindset before? A fear mindset, being very fearful of things that are gonna happen, right? It just sounds kind of clear. <laughs> just scared, afraid of whatever. If you leave this job, maybe you'll have a worse one. If you leave this place, maybe it'll be a worse place. If you leave this relationship, maybe you'll be alone forever. Fear. Then there's the abundance side, which is, ah, I truly believe I can find someone who won't abuse me or yell at me. I truly believe I can find a better job that'll pay me more. I believe I can be in a better place with more peace. A believing that there's so many things out there that are potentially better than what they are now, especially if you're not happy. But if you're on those ends of the spectrum, if you're fearful or if you're feeling abundant, they're, they're vastly different. And being in that fearful state is not very healthy. It's not good for you. You're gonna be stressed a lot and your life isn't really gonna be that great. So I'm gonna talk about the difference between these two and just share some ideas so maybe you can get your mind wrapped around this, especially if you're in that fear state because you want to move from that fear to that abundant state. Usually when we're stuck in life, there's some kind of fear mindset that's inside of us. Let's just use the job for example. If you have a job that you really don't like, maybe the fear mindset is mm, another job is probably going to suck just as much as this one or maybe it's going to be worse. And maybe you've been in this job for a few years and didn't like it. And you're thinking, oh, if I move to another job and it's going to be even worse, why would I do that? Or you don't like your neighbors at the place you're living, but you're like, but I got to pack up everything and move to a new place. And maybe the neighbors are going to be even worse than the ones I have now. Fear, right? Both of those are fear mindsets because you have no idea what's going to happen. Abundance mindset might be something like, I really don't like this job. And I imagine that there's so many jobs out there that are better than this one. It's probably a very rare thing to have a bad job like this one. So any job would be better than this one. Okay, that's just an example. Okay, you might be laughing, maybe that's a little bit extreme, but the chances are that when you switch jobs, you're probably gonna have a better job. You're probably gonna get paid more. You're probably going to have more free time, have more days off, not be as stressed. There's gonna be all these positives that happen when you change jobs. All the negatives you're thinking are probably not gonna happen. And for moving, if you're thinking about packing up all your things and maybe the neighbors would be worse, it's probably not the case because some people really suck, but there's a lot of really good people out there. So when you move to a new place, you're probably going to have really good neighbors. You're probably going to have an even better place, maybe more natural lighting if that's what you like and a better kitchen or whatever it is. The whole house's layout is so much better than you could have imagined. And the neighbors are so kind and they're peaceful. You don't want to talk to them, they barely talk to you. If you want friendly neighbors, they'll probably all be really friendly to you. This is coming from a mindset of abundance. I'm going to be honest with you. Fear hits all of us. It still hits me. I keep changing my life. And I keep altering things. And I love the way my life is going. And when I get to another place of fear, I have to sit there and I have to think about it. What am I fearful about? Is it really going to happen? And then I move to the next level and it keeps progressing. So as of now, I've been traveling the world for two years. And I can just imagine every time I would have got stuck in some country. And the reason I say stuck is because the country wasn't the best for me, but I almost stayed there. And when I travel around, I meet some people that have been in a country for five years and they complain about it. It's like, well, you're not in the States. Why are you complaining about where you are here? You got all these problems and stuff, but they need change. You know, they could, you can move out of the United States to a new country doesn't mean the first country is the perfect one for you. It means you have to search for it. So over two years, I've searched. <laughs> I've been to a lot of countries. My dream country, Japan, I even went to. And I lived there for three months. And I went to Colombia, Peru, Mexico, uh, and a bunch of other countries. <laughs> okay, leaving my brain now. What I can say, though, is the country that resonated most with me is Vietnam. Every time I left, I got pulled back here. Even when I went to Thailand, which is a pretty great place and it's so close and I'll probably continue going there, I feel in my heart that Vietnam is for me. And I feel that now. I don't know what my heart's going to feel 10 years down the road. I don't have to think what my heart wants 10 years down the road. Because if my heart wanted to be in India 10 years down the road, it doesn't mean I need to go live there now because my heart's not there now. 
my heart is in Vietnam. So following my heart, I'm here. Then when I'm here, what challenges do I have? <laughs> and then how do I overcome those challenges? Every single place you're gonna have challenges and you need to overcome them. But if you think of the mindset of abundance, you can believe that when you overcome these challenges, there'll be better things on the other side. So we could think the first time I came into Vietnam, language barrier, right? What the heck am I gonna do? Or I don't know the foods. That's, that's a big one, right? I don't know the foods. Well, there's so many foods in Vietnam. I've tried so many. Some I really like, some I don't so much like. And there's still so much more food to keep trying. I know that might sound silly, but that's totally a challenge, which is why I've challenged myself to eat a lot of crazy things like a, a live uh, grub or a dung mua. It's like a little grub that lives inside a coconut its whole life. I challenge myself to eat that because it's, you know, something that people eat here and enjoy. So if I can eat that, then I'm probably gonna eat the other stuff. Then I eat like blood cakes and all, all the stuff. And then I can figure out like, okay, I don't really like that stuff, right? So now I can kind of weave the way of what I do like and what I don't like and still allowing myself to try new things occasionally. That's the first piece I wanna drop in this video because I could talk about so many different ways to change, but the fear versus abundance mindset is a really, really big one. And I hear it constantly and coaches talk about it. And I've even been supported with that a long time ago because at a point in my life where I was extraordinarily stuck and could not see a way out of it, I had someone else help me. One of my really good friends just assist with the way I was seeing life so that I could overcome that. And that was it, that was huge and pivotal in my life. Sometimes you need someone else to, to see what you uh, can overcome. Sometimes you're stuck in some way that the other person has seen before and they can support you in overcoming that. So it's good to be open and accepting of advice and support and guidance, but be mindful of it, right? If somebody has not overcome that same thing and reached some level that you would like to get to, then it could just be someone saying things that they would do in your situation, but it doesn't really matter because they're stuck anyway and they're fearful. So like, if you're gonna accept guidance, accept it from somebody who's achieved some level that you wanna go to or you admire, um, in, in some regard. And my friend, I, I really, really admired. So I was able to listen to him and, and accept his guidance, <clears throat> which I will say I was afraid of at first too. So much fear goes into these things. If you want my example, I don't really want to share this example, but yeah, I will. I was living in New Orleans before I started traveling. So we're thinking two years ago and I was living in an apartment with my mom. First, there are some pros of that, like spending time with my mom later on in life, which was wonderful in some aspects, <laughs> but also in some others that she can agree with were not so great. We had a neighbor that was just absolutely awful. Every time you walked inside, she would walk outside instantly and just start venting and complaining. And if you try to get away from her, she would like yell at you from behind. She would come bang on the door drunk and bust her way in and then cry and tell you about like all the awful things in her life. So always venting, always complaining. You felt like you couldn't get away from her, but it kind of felt suffocating in a way. And at that time, I wasn't as good at talking to people about venting and it was, it was very difficult for me. It's probably one of the reasons why I can understand uh, venting a little bit better because there's been people in my life who have vented and, and it's really disturbing to someone else to have to listen to that level of venting all the time. Anyway, that disturbed the mindset of my mom, myself, and my brother who lived nearby. This area that we're living in wasn't really that safe either. My brother mentioned to me that when he was very close by at a gas station, someone like pulled up a shirt and flashed my brother a gun. Uh, you know, if you're living in some other country, you're like, oh, Americans, right? <laughs> but if you're in America, you're like, okay. You know, that happens all the time, especially if you're in like New Orleans where, uh, where I grew up, like, oh yeah, okay, sure, that happens. But it can really make you feel uncomfortable and it can put a fear mindset into you. So obviously the fear mindset of safety, but then the fear mindset of, I don't wanna be stuck in a conversation with this person who just vents all the time and doesn't really listen to me and won't let me get a word in, blah, blah, all that stuff. To add on to my mindset at the time, I had a business before and I still had it, except when I moved back in my mom, it was because COVID hit and my money went to zero. When that happened, it meant I couldn't afford to live anywhere <laughs> anymore. So I told my mom, like, can I live on your sofa just for like a week and a half or maybe two weeks? So I moved on to her sofa and that's be like many, many months before we, got, <laughs> before we got a bed there. And then I ended up staying at my mom's place for a year and a half. And I tried to bring positive mindsets in there. I tried for us to have a positive mindset, 
but just the surroundings, the neighbor, like if we were a little bit too loud, the neighbor would like bang on the ceiling with a broom or like yell from downstairs. And she was always really noisy. Anyway, it just makes you uncomfortable. It makes you feel like you can't just be yourself. So all of this stuff happened and we just became very fearful, a very fearful mindset. Um, not, not just for safety, but just in just being the people we want to be, which is how some children might grow up when their parents are overbearing on them. They might become fearful of being themselves, allowing themselves to just be who they truly want to be. So that can happen in a short time uh, in anyone's life, you know, in a relationship or in a job or whatever it might be. You just feel stifled. So anyway, so my mom and I are feeling very stifled in this scenario. Time moves on. We have some extreme scenarios that help push us out of this place, which, which my mom and I are grateful for. And we were able to see the opportunities. But something happened in my mom's life and in mine. And you know, I'm going to share my own personal one because I'm me. Well, I could share that at some other point. But for me, what happened was I traveled away from New Orleans for a weekend with a, a new backpack I got because I was thinking about doing some traveling to go visit my friend. When I was visiting him, a hurricane hit in New Orleans and the airport closed down. I couldn't go back home. The following weekend, I was going to go to New York and go to a bachelor party. So I just stayed in Dallas. I was visiting my buddy for a whole week. And then I went to New York to go to this bachelor party. After the bachelor party, I was going to go back to New Orleans. But when the bachelor party ended, New Orleans airport was still closed. I couldn't go back home. And so I was thinking about going to see my brother and my dad because they evacuated to Texas. But that situation wasn't really going to work out. I remember my brother asking me, so what are you going to do? And I was like, Jordan, I don't know, but I'm going to figure it out. And he's like, you sure? I was like, yeah, I'm sure. So I met a lot of people at this bachelor party. So what I decided to do was just send out a big message to the whole group saying, does anyone have like a spare sofa I could stay on while the New Orleans airport's closed? Anyway, there's people from around the country that came to this bachelor party. Well, there's like a bunch of different bachelor parties at this event. <laughs> so there's lots and lots of people. And so people message. And then I was thinking like, People are all over the country. I could probably go from New York all the way across the country to California because I knew some people that were there were in California by just buses and trains. So let's try that. So then I did it. So buses and trains all the way across America. And that was like several months, I think I did that. And then when I got back to New Orleans, things in my mom's life have changed and she was moving. She already left actually. And she was gonna go to Tennessee. So she was there. I came back, there was like one more week in the apartment, which is one of the reasons why I came back. Packed up all my belongings, sold my car, and left the country. <laughs> and that's the end of that story. <laughs> For that, uh, I'm grateful that I had my buddy in my life that was helping me see that I could travel through the country at this time without having a fearful mindset and be like, I need to go back to my brother and my dad and go back to New Orleans and hurry up and get back there. Like that could have happened. But instead I decided to travel and just see the country having that more of abundance mindset. And then when I got back, it's like, why the heck? My whole mindset started changing. Why the heck am I here in the United States paying a fortune traveling to the United States when I can travel outside of the United States and save money? Oh my goodness, that would be amazing. So there's a whole story about leaving the country and stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, when I left, most of the stuff outside the United States is cheaper. So if you can make the same money inside the United States, work remotely and live outside, your money just goes a lot further. You can put more into savings. Just everything works out better. My whole life changed for the better from a very fearful mindset. <laughs> I'm shaking the camera. From a very fearful mindset and thinking I couldn't really do anything. My business wasn't making money. I can't really, like nothing's gonna happen. Maybe I should go get a job. Maybe I should like stay here. I'm, I'm worthless having that mindset to traveling the world and being in places where people value my presence. I don't feel worthless at all. People really value my presence, which makes me feel wonderful. You should always be around people that value your presence. If somebody makes you feel worthless, then they are worth zero of your time. You really should spend less time around them because it's not gonna make you feel any better. It's gonna make you feel worse every time you spend time around them. But if somebody makes you feel like you're valuable, like you're important, you will feel wonderful. And please treat that person the same way back because it will make both of you feel wonderful. And if you can find that, and if you believe that you are worth something, then you will continue to believe it because you'll continue to find people that also believe that in you and you'll be happier than you ever were before. The more people treat you 
worthless or use negative words when they talk to you, avoid hanging around those people. Limit your time with them and search for those who will make you feel good, who will make you feel valuable. And the more time you spend around those, the more you'll project forwards in life. Tremendously more than the people that are being negative. Even if they're not being extraordinarily negative, they might just be saying negative comments, but words are really powerful. And if you keep hearing something that's negative, you will become, uh, you, you will start to believe that comment. And if you hear really positive comments all the time, you will believe those positive comments. So surround yourself with people that are positive, see value in you and see your, your worth. Even just that scenario I'm giving about people you surround yourself with, it goes just in line with the abundance and fear mindset. You know, if you're surrounding yourself with people that make you feel worthless, you have a fear that you are worthless and nobody else is gonna to wanna to spend time with you. So why try to make more friends? Why invest the time? Why invest the energy? Like you'll have all these things about why you should not do it. On the other end of the spectrum, if you had the abundance mindset, you would think, you know, these friends aren't exactly what I want. They're not treating me as nice as I would like to be treated. I believe there are people out there that would treat me incredible, that would be really kind to me and make me feel like I'm the most important person in the world to them. And I would make them feel the same way back. I, I would love to feel important. I would love to feel valued. And I believe I can feel valued. And then you go out there and search for it and you keep searching until you find it. And you 100% will find it because you're searching for it. I don't know when that'll be. I don't know how long that'll take, but you'll find it. And trust me, that is way better than sitting back, not trying, and having all these friends that are just not so nice to you. Go out and search for those people that are nice to you. <laughs>